you know, Dr. Tan, thank you uh, for joining me. Um, we're potentially now days away uh, from uh, the Pfizer vaccine being approved and going out for distribution in the United States. Um, still, most people uh, in the United States won't be vaccinated uh, for months, spring, summer, fall. So, you know, for, for those people, what will everyday life look like in the coming months? Yeah, hey James, just call me LJ, please. It's a lot less formal. Um, I, um, yeah, so that's a great question. I think, I think as you've already suggested, we're not going to have enough vaccine to get everyone covered. So the people who are going to get first are the healthcare workers and the people in long-term care facilities, people who are more essential to functioning of society. Those folks are getting vaccinated to protect them so that they can continue to do their jobs, which are essential to society. That unfortunately does not get us out of this, right? So what I like to say is the way we're going to get out of this pandemic is that we've got to have herd immunity or what I like to call community immunity. Um, once we get there, which means 65 to 75% of the population has either been exposed or vaccinated, uh, uh, exposed through vaccination, then we're back to normal, right? We, we're, we're, we're as close to normal as we're going to get. But in order to get out of it with community immunity, we've got to get through it still. So until we get out of it, which may be the end of next year, right? As we roll out the vaccination program, we still have to get through this without losing lives and causing burden on our healthcare, so our healthcare systems, right? And that means a lot of those social distancing practices we've been doing, the masking, um, hand sanitizations, all that's not gonna go away. I mean, we're gonna have to keep on doing it so that we can get through this to get out of it, unfortunately. Right, and, and, and so you're talking about herd immunity when we have you know, between 65 and 75% of people. Uh, who are vaccinated and, and sort of releases us from the burden of this social distancing. Um, what about the interim period where, you know, uh, first we're going to have frontline workers and those who are most vulnerable being vaccinated. Um, I say I have family members who are going to be vaccinated. Um, will I be able to see those family members even if I haven't been vaccinated? What about the mechanics uh, of, of everyday life? Are businesses going to start requiring um, people who are uh, to show vaccination to fly or to enter movie theaters um, will everyday life change or is it just going to be like we are you know right now yes yeah, so I think there will be shift as the vaccine rolls out and I think uh, and I think we what we're understanding now and this is shifting because it depends on how many manufacturers end up getting authorization from the FDA through the course of the spring of next year right the more manufacturers that get authorized the more vaccine we have the faster we move out of this but let's say it's about June when we can finally offer vaccination to everybody Right. That's that's would be the big step for all of us to get out of this, including myself. You know, and so I think one of the things then at that point in time, until then, we will have to be safe. But around that time, when people start regular Joes, regular jo jo Josephine and Joe, sorry, uh, get vaccinated. Uh, when that starts happening, we can start thinking about what your questions. Right. So, for example, if I get vaccinated and I know my family's been vaccinated and I know uh, Deborah's family across the way has also been vaccinated. We can merge. We can do stuff together. We don't have to mask. We can hug. We can do everything we've been doing before, right? Um, and, and as more and more vaccinated families show up, they can continue to merge their pods, as I like to call it, right? So that definitely can start happening with vaccination. Now, the next question which you've asked is, is what does that mean going out though, right? As I go out as a family, I know my family because we've been vaccinated is protected. I'm safe. However, there are a lot of families that may not yet have been vaccinated yet, have not got their vaccine. Um, and in those cases, they should continue masking, right? So, so what does that mean? Does that mean I just not mask and kind of like flaunt my vaccination status? I don't think so. I think as a society, we want, we want masking to be a social norm. So even as I am vaccinated, I will tell my children, when you're out there, wear your mask, right? Because others may not have been vaccinated. So I think masking is going to stay socially norm at least through the end of the year as we get more and more people vaccinated, right? So that's one thing. So then the big, the big question, right? The economy, how do we get ourselves back to, to life as it used to be, right? And, and, I, and I think that's going to, that's going to depend ultimately on, on our societal expectations and, 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 and what we're willing to accept in terms of the risk and benefit, right? So if I were a movie theater and I start saying, you know, show me status that you've been vaccinated. And, I, and I, I call that the immunization status, right? That you've been vaccinated. That's very different from the immunity status. 
because immunity means I'm still protected. My, you know, I'm not, my immunization has not waned. I still have antibodies in me that protect me. Those are very different. So what does that mean? That means that what if happens if someone shows me a, a piece of paper that, that, that card, for example, that everyone's talking about, and that certifies, you know, that, that says, there's no certification, that says that I've been vaccinated, you know, four months ago. Is that good for me as a movie theater? What if the immunity wanes after three months? Right. What if that person then got infected and it's going to carry stuff into my theater and the people who are not back in my theater, what if they get infected, right? So those are policy decisions that I think the CDC are going to start thinking about in terms of recommendations is what's going to be accept, what's going to be, what's needed to be done to open up the country that way. They're not easy questions, James. I think that's the problem. They're not easy questions. You know, do we put expiration dates then, right? You know, based on all this has to be science-based. If we, if the science magically, not magically, because that's such a contrary word to science, if the science indicates that this immunity from our vaccine lasts a year, that's awesome. Because then we know that we can put minimally a one-year expiration date, right, on potential, potential certifications, right? Um, but is that the way we're going to do that? I mean, so those are things that are all shifting right now. I wish I had a concrete answer for you. Okay. Well, it, it, it is enlightening still um as opaque as our our, our, our near future is um dr tan dr lj tan of the immunization action coalition thanks for talking to us oh thank you for having me <laughs>